Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will talk about a common mistake I see people do when it comes to using state flow. Or not only state flow, actually also flows in general. So very often we deal with UI states in a view model, pretty much always if you're using a view model. And then let's say you have something like this. You have a user view model, which simply contains a list of users. Could be, for example, when building a chat app and you want to display a list of users that are currently in a chat. You can see a user consists of an ID, an email, a name, and an avatar URL. And then we simply have some functions. You could imagine these would be called from some kind of remote API or whatever. So this function is called when a user joins the, the chat room and this function is called when the user info is updated. For example, when the avatar actually is updated. So you also want to update the user in your local state. And let's now say you on the one hand want to show a list of all users in your UI and you also want to show the local user. So whatever user is currently logged in, you want to maybe show that as, as a special entry on the top or so. So what you will do is you will have two states, one for all users and one for the local user. And whenever you update the users list, you will also simply just update the local user if the user ID is actually yeah the one from the local user. And here correspondingly, you will simply update the user info of all users and you will also update the user info of the local user if the ID is local again. Can you spot the mistake? You can simply pause the video here for a few seconds and take a look at this code. And then I will give you yeah, the solution and why this is an issue. So uh, let's talk about why this can be an issue here. Right now in this code, there won't be any bug, but this code is very vulnerable to bugs. Let's say you work in a team with some other developers or you just get back to this product after a while and you don't only have these two functions here on user joined and then when, when the user info updated, let's say there are more infos, maybe you want to user leaves or whatever, then every single time this users list changes, you will also need to remember to actually update the local user. And of course, the more states you have that actually derive from this users list, the more complex this will be. And if there's just one team member in your team who does not know that this user, this local user state actually needs to be updated every time the users list changes, because the local user could also change if this users list changes, then if they forget that, you will effectively have a bug in your code. Because there is no real scenario where the local user would change, but not the other users. Or I mean, not this users list here, because the local user is always part of this users list. And as soon as you rely on this local user state, and you once forget to actually update this after the users list changes, then yeah, you will just have a bug and your local user will not be the most up-to-date instance. So what can we do instead? Every time you actually have a state where another state is actually derived of, um, in Compose we actually have this effect handler derived state of, but uh, we actually can do the same with state flow. We can actually totally get rid of that because we don't want to manually need to update this local user every time the users list changes. So we can also get rid of this, of this, and now since this local user instance is always derived of this users list, we can say, users dot map here we get a list of our users and we can say the local user is now users dot find where the id of the user is local and if we now say state in i will explain this in more detail after i wrote this view model scope sharing started while subscribed and null then we effectively have the same behavior as before just that this is not vulnerable to this bug i mentioned uh, anymore so let's go through this step by step. We say the local user is users.map. So we say that's equal to this users flow here. And every time that changes, we map the value of that users flow. So the, the current users list to this value, which is in the end, just a user value. So every time the users value changes, we just find the local user and update that in our local user state. So if we take a look here, this is now also just a state flow that holds a user. If we would have just done this, then nothing would actually happen because we need to actually launch the flow and with state in we do that. So we basically just cache the, the latest value here in this local user flow. We say we want to use the view model scope to launch this flow. This sharing started while subscribed 
basically means that this code is only active while there are subscribers to this local user flow. So if the UI, for example, is currently not subscribing to this to updates of this local user, then we will also not find the local user every time the users list changes. And the initial value should be pretty self-explanatory. Initially, we just start with a null user since we don't have one. But now effectively, whenever our users list updates, then our local user will automatically also update right after Afterwards, which is exactly what we want and there can't be any weird race conditions or weird bugs that can happen this way. And of course this is a simple example. I want to also show you a little bit more complex example so you might get a grasp for why you should really stick to using these flow operators together with a state in if state actually derives from another state. Let's take a look at this chat view model here I prepared. This also makes use of these users but uh, to just give you a quick demo of what we want to do here, we want to actually have this data class here. This is a chat state which contains user previews and a header title. And you can imagine this is just like the um, screen in WhatsApp where you have your list of chats, where you have all your friends' um, profile icons, where you have the last message that they sent you or that you sent them, and yeah, just their name. So you can actually select a chat. Uh, that is the screen we kind of want to model here with the state in a very simplified way. So this user preview would be just one element of that list. It contains a user we want to display and the last message of, uh, yeah, of that user. And then we have a chat message which simply contains to a user, contains a message and a time. And with these two classes we effectively now want to create a state that contains a list of user previews. Since your user info and your chat messages might come from different places, maybe from different APIs, maybe some kind of remote service or third-party service, then you don't really directly get this combined list of user previews where you need to have the user info and the last message together in one state. So we kind of need to map these together. But we also might want to actually consider if the user is currently logged in. So if the user logs out, we automatically want to kind of not show the chats anymore because the user shouldn't be able to see them when they are logged out, just as an example. So as you can see, this final chat state here derives of quite some states, in our case of these three states. And whenever our is logged in changes, then we want to kind of reconsider calculating our chat state whenever our messages change. Well, for example, if one user actually sent a message, then we want to update the corresponding user preview that uh, the last message is now changed. And whenever the users list changes, if there is a new user, for example, who sent you a message, then we also want to update our chat state. So there are now three states where our chat state actually derives off. And the way we can now do this very efficiently and effectively without actually having any race conditions is using the flow combine operator. So we can say val chat state is equal to combine and yeah, as the name says, that is used to combine different flows. And we can combine all of them. So is logged in, chat messages and users. And then we also get these as variables here. So is logged in, then messages and users, just like that. So what does that now do? Combine will effectively call this piece of code whenever any of these three flows actually emits a new value. So whenever any of these changes, this block of code is now triggered with all these three values. And that's actually what we want to do. Whenever any of these values changes, we want to kind of recalculate our chat state to always reflect the most up-to-date state. So if you if we wouldn't do it like this, then every time this chat messages changes, this logged in changes, this users changes, we would also need to recalculate all these other values. So if the users list changes, we only would want to update that if we are logged in. So we would need to add a check. If the chat messages change, we would need to kind of check if the, the user still exists and the user users list, we would also need to check if we are still logged in and that every single time when any of these values changes. So there's a lot of code involved to make this work right and especially as I said if you work in a team and your team does not know that then this will lead to bugs. So what we can now do in this chat state is we can first of all check if we are actually logged in because only then we want to map this to a chat state object and else we simply return null. So that way we effectively all already considered this is logged in boolean because if we're not logged in then we just don't get a state out of this. So let's see how we can now do this here. Our user previews is a list of user preview. So we now need to take our messages list and our users list and kind of combine these to a user preview. And we can do this using users.map and in here we would simply map each user to a user preview. So we can say user preview the user is just it. 
and the last message well we also need to kind of find this last message now given our messages list because this just contains a list of all messages of all users so we first of all need to find the message that belongs to this user and we need to find the latest message of that user to actually show it here in the last message string so what we can do is we can simply say messages dot filter we only want messages where the user is actually to actually equal to the let's call it current user actually this one updated here so we only want messages where the user is actually equal to the current user and we also want to consider that we get the latest message so we can say max by or null we want to max this by the time so just the the largest timestamp will be the latest message and then we can say that message, which is the string of that message. So you can see there's a lot of things going on. And if we wouldn't use combine here, we would need to recalculate this every single time anything changes. If that, um, like if that chat messages change, if that users change, we'd always need to recalculate this last message. And this way it will all happen automatically thanks to using combine. And we could also kind of update the header title here, for example, to I don't know, the first user's name or so, users.first or null, that name, or just chat. I don't know, just a simple example. So you can see this is actually a lot more complex in this example, but you would need to write a lot, a lot, a lot more code to make this work without having this reactivity, thanks to combine. And you would also have code that is much, much more vulnerable to bugs. Of course, right now this code wouldn't do anything because we still need to say we want to save the result of this calculation here in a flow, which effectively then gets a state flow. So we again want to say state in via model scope, sharing started, while subscribed and the initial value is null. And that way we effectively now have our chat state flow, which we can then easily observe in our UI. And we always can be sure that it reflects the latest UI state. And if you actually realize in future that this chat state derives of more states and not only of these three ones here, for example, if you would also need to consider some other kind of flow and you are about to write something like dot value or so to refer to the current value of the flow, don't do this actually instead add the new flow here in the list and also then use the corresponding value that you yeah that the flow then gives you here because if you depend on a state flows value by using yeah that view model dot state flow dot value or so or directly in the view model then uh, this can also lead to race conditions because if we for example would get of this users list here and every time we refer to our users list we say users dot value instead um and here users dot value then we don't get any errors here, but this can lead to race conditions because let's say the chat messages actually changes, which will trigger this piece of code. You will then read the current users list, but while doing so, the users list actually gets updated. Then you actually also want to recalculate the chat state. But since you, you don't make this combine rely on this users flow, this wouldn't be executed. So your state would be invalid because you relied on an older state of this users list. So always, as soon as you have some kind of value in here that comes from a state flow, make sure to include that here in combine. So I hope that helped you to understand how flows work and how reactive programming works with flows to make actually use of that and get rid of some bugs in your project. If so, then let me know that down below and also let me know what kind of topics you might want to hear in future and want to see in future on my channel. That would be awesome Then I will consider doing that. And if you are not a subscriber of this channel yet and you like this video, then definitely do that and hit subscribe now because then you will get two Android videos every single week so you can get a better Android developer. Thanks for watching, enjoy your week and I will see you back in the next video. Bye bye.